we also always do family service Sundays, and we call that um, because we as a church are a family. And part of the reason we do this in particular is because we as a church believe in multi-generational learning um, and multi-generational community. And so one of the ways we operate that, ooh, hello, that started to work. Um, I was just gonna talk really loud the rest of the service. Um, but one of the ways we do that is by doing these services. We um, believe in the verses in the Bible that talk about when Jesus says, come, let the little children come to me. And another verse that I've been turning and turning in recently is the uh, first in First Corinthians. Paul talks about how we are a body of believers and not, and God placed each part to be a vital part. And so uh, we have to be together to learn and to grow in the way we are called to do that. And so once a month, we take the time and we bring the stories and the learning that we're doing downstairs, upstairs. And I appreciate this time because I think as adults, we get into overthinking a lot. And um, a lot of our sermons or Bible studies are surrounded by interpreting scriptures or trying to see what it means. And that is good, and we are called to do that, but sometimes it's good to just be reminded of these stories and why we know these stories and why they're important to our tradition. And so as this season comes, we are in the middle of Lent. We are three weeks in, and we are doing a series called The Faces of God from the Godly Play curriculum. And so we are walking through Jesus' life together with our kids. Um, and so we will go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, the first couple are gonna be a little bit of a test to see how much our kids remember. Can somebody tell me what this first picture was? Mary and Joseph, and they're looking down at their baby. And we celebrated this season of Christmas and another season that has a lot of purple because we are talking about our arrival of a king, but a arrival of a different kind of king. And so this was our first story about Mary and Joseph and the love they have for their child. And then we have our second story, a little trickier. Yeah? The Jesus was talking to, um, there was a particular place we were in the story. Oh, the, temple. the temple. So this is the story of Jesus running away from his parents, which they weren't too happy about, um, and going to the temple. And he said, of course I'm here. Of course. And he was teaching in the temple at a young age. This is really one of the only stories we get about Jesus as a child. Um, so these are our first two stories. And then today we're gonna introduce our next two stories. And the next story comes after Jesus is grown, he becomes a man and he's 30 years old. And one day he goes to the River Jordan where his cousin John, which you can kind of see an image of maybe a little bit of wild hair over here. John was a very eccentric person. Uh, John was a little bit wild and uh, lived very differently than people in those times. But Jesus went to his cousin in the water and waded out into the water where John was baptizing people. And Jesus asked him to baptize me. He said, John, baptize me. And John looked at his face and for the first time, John had a realization that he said, I can't baptize you. You're the Messiah. You're the one we've been waiting for. Who am I to baptize you? Can you baptize me? And Jesus said no and said, it was written, you were to come before me and you were to baptize me. So baptize me, John. And so John dipped him into the water and Jesus went unto 
into the darkness and chaos of the water, and then came back up into the light. And people who were there said they saw a dove come and land on Jesus. And some other people who were there said they heard a voice saying, this is my son with who I am well pleased. This is my beloved son. After that, Jesus went to the desert to learn more about what he was to do with his life and the work he was going to do and to learn more about himself. Jesus was there for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. And in the desert, there's not a lot of food or drink. And one day, in the middle of those 40 days, he heard a voice saying, there's some rocks over there. If you are the son of God, why don't you just turn the rocks into bread and eat? And Jesus said, no. I know to be fully human is to need more than bread to live on. And then a little while later, Jesus heard the voice again saying, he felt like he was at the top of the temple looking out. And the voice said, if you're the son of God, why don't you jump and have the angels rescue you before you hit the rocks? And Jesus said, no. I know that we don't need to test God. Another time Jesus was looking out over all these kingdoms and he heard a voice say, I can give you the kingdoms. I can give you the power over all this land. And Jesus said, no, I know that I will be a king one day, but I won't be that kind of king. I will be a different kind of king. And so... He stayed for 40 days and 40 nights praying in the desert. And then he walked back across the Jordan and began to do his work. One of the fun things about this story is when we're downstairs, after we're done with these stories, we take a moment, which is a little bit different. And usually we have a time of wondering and we ask questions that I don't know the answer to and you don't know the answer to, but we talk about it and we discuss what might be an answer or what might be something we can take from it. During this season, we take a moment and we look around our room with all of our stories and the kids get to bring something from one of the other stories that reminds them of the story we heard today. So, since we don't have the rest of our uh, stories around us, I was wondering if you heard something in these stories today that reminded you of another Bible story. Does anything sound familiar? What, Mommy? Whoa. So 40 days. Um, just the number 40 mm -hmm. reminds me of the 40 years mm -hmm. that the Israelites were also wandering in the desert and facing all kinds of questions and things for themselves as they were reconciling their life to God. Yeah. We hear 40 a couple times in the Bible. Peter was jumping ahead of himself as he tends to do. Peter is one of the disciples of God and um, Peter got really upset at the fact that Jesus said he was going to die and um, Jesus told him to get behind him and that um, those words were bad to say and so um, we did a lot of talking about that. One of the things in uh, God We Play that we'll see more and more is this reoccurrence of water and what water means in the Bible. And um, 
and also the stories of baptism and um, I think about the Pharaoh and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea um, and this chaotic water that is a very kind of survival. Yeah, yeah. There um, are a lot of conversations that my brain starts fizzling out in seminary, but we start talking about the fully God and fully human Jesus. And um, there's lots of theologian opinions on this, and um, I don't think any of them have really come to a stand like a common ground. Um, they all kind of have their own idea of what that means. But I tend to lean on the fully human part because I think there was a reason God came as an infant, right? And experienced all of life and experienced all of humanity as a person. And yes, he was fully God and fully human at the same time, but there was a choice that was made to be embodied and be a human and go through growing stages and... Um, get older, and so, um, yeah, you're not alone in those <laughs> realizations and complicated questions about that. Um, there are lots of arguments about, if you want the big word, Christ's um, and what it means that God was human and God at the same time, and Jesus was human and God at the same time. So the next part that we do downstairs is we respond with art because we are fully human. And sometimes our body and our mind are treated very separately. And But we are people who were created by a very creative creator. Um, say that 10 times fast. And so one of the things we do downstairs to connect our body and our mind and our spirit is by responding with art. Um, that does not mean you have to be good at art to respond with art. Um, it just means it's an opportunity to think about the story in a different way with different um, textures, with different colors, than maybe we than just listening to it. And so I'm going to invite you all to come up. We have crayons, pencils, Play-Doh, and our uh, everyone's favorite air dry place. Um, <laughs> and pick what how you want to respond, and we'll spend about ten minutes responding um, with some art response. So please come up and come with us here. 